Hello, it's Shawnee. Welcome back. So I figured I would just play around with some makeup, maybe do a sort of like New Year's Eve eye, even though I'm gonna probably be at home because I'm still getting over this like flu or whatever it is that's had me knocked on my behind for about two and a half weeks. And I figured that I would tell you about some news that I've been reading. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the Pre-Illusion Eye Shadow Base from Davina Cosmetics. And let me tell you what I've been reading lately. Now, the first two things that stood out to me is, is just like, I was just sort of like, people don't have anything to do, okay? Because these ideas had to have come from people that don't have anything to do. The first one is that they have come out with a nacho cheese Dorito Dorito flavored alcohol. So they're like, oh, this will be great in like margaritas and like other mixed drinks or just on the rocks. I'm sorry. If I want some nacho cheese Doritos, I'm gonna have me some nacho cheese Doritos. Just this morning, I had some Cooler Ranch Doritos. Remember when it was Cool Ranch, but I think now it's like Cooler Ranch and it was like nacho cheese and I was like nacho cheesier. Is that right? I don't know. But I remember back in the day when they didn't have the extra on it. I had some for breakfast, okay? Now, if I want to have some Doritos, I'm going to have some Doritos. If I want to have a drink, an adult beverage, a libation, I'm going to have that. I don't need my drink to taste like Doritos, okay? And I don't need my Doritos to taste like my drink. I don't I don't want it. I think it's like, it's a lot of proof. Alcohol is like 42%. Okay, you probably gonna have to have it that that high because ew, you probably only gonna be able to drink a little bit of it because you're like you gonna feel like it's like liquid Dorito. Ew. But let me tell you what you can you can also if you go to the bar and somebody doesn't want the like Dorito liquor, well you can get a beer. And you can get a beer that tastes like blue cheese. Y'all, what I tell you, people don't have nothing to do. You don't have nothing to do. You just pick the most random stuff to talk about you gonna make it a flavor of alcohol. We don't need no more flavors, okay? We got strawberry, uh, like, we don't need no more flavors. We have everything is already infused into the alcohol. Next, they're going to be talking about we got cheeseburger flavored uh, gin. No, no. Keep those separate. Like, I don't know why it makes me angry, but it does. Y'all over here talking about Dorito. And it's already for sale. It's already for sale. Okay? Let me see. Because I, I saw that you could go ahead and get the... um. The Dorito alcohol, I feel like it was in California, which does not surprise me because we don't have no sense. Let me see. Nacho cheese flavored alcoholic drink. You can do on pre-order, and this was a couple, like two weeks ago, so you can probably still pre-order it. They say it's best used in a margarita, a Bloody Mary, or an Old Fashioned. That's nasty. They said it's going to smell and taste like, just like the real thing. The iconic nacho cheese flavor in a bottle. Doritos! Frito-Lay! What are y'all doing? Okay, it's limited release, so if you want it, you're going to have to get it. 42% alcohol will be made by using real chips and extracting their essence through vacuum distillation. I don't know what that means. It's not gin or whiskey. They're just saying you can add it. You can add it to your drinks. Or, you know, you could do margarita, Bloody Mary, Old Fashioned. Or you just have it over ice. You could have it neat. Or you could have it over ice. They're like, because they're trying to explain why they're doing this. Doritos is all about disrupting culture and bringing our fans unexpected, bold experiences. This has got to be the dumbest thing. They're like, we're always pushing our fans to try new things, so we figured it's time we disrupt the spirits category by offering our iconic nacho cheese flavor in a bottle. No, no, no. No. 
It will be on shelves in select New York and California markets in January. It's going to be about $65 a bottle. I have no intention of purchasing this ever in life. If, if I, no, there's not, no, 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 <clears throat> no intention of purchasing it. No, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and with the She's a 10 palette from Dose of Colors. Um, ew. Okay. <laughs> like that's nasty. That's nasty. Now I know quite a few people don't, uh, engage in libationary experiences, but tell me if you do, would you ever have a Dorito flavored alcohol like a mixer it seems like it's a mixer it oh girl, girl that sounds so nasty but let me tell let me tell you about the brewery that is going to make you your blue cheese beer this came out like a day after the nacho cheese one so they were like we got it we got to do something to shake up the industry so at least they're saying there's been some skepticism um so they're saying it's got nuance and complexity, but it's not too cheesy. It's not too strong. The blue cheese is real, like, it's, it's a taste, right? It's a really nice balanced product that once you get to know it a little more, maybe sip two, three glass, two or three glasses, you may begin to pick up on that very, that slight hint of blue cheese on the finish. You know why? Because your ass gonna be drunk if you <laughs> drink all of that. By the time he's like two, three, four, five glasses, you're gonna taste it. Of course I am, because I'm falling out of my chair. And they, apparently they had a tasting event in, um, Southeast Portland, what was it like last week? And you can you can buy at the pub, the Crux Pub in Southeast Portland, and at the Creamery that's helping them make it. Listen, why people can't leave well enough alone? They cannot leave well enough alone. I'm maybe I don't have refined taste because I don't I don't want Dorito flavored alcohol. Ew, it, uh, and I also don't want blue cheese flavor beer. Come on. I feel like they're trying to like combine stuff, you know, like why get an appetizer and a drink when you can just get this drink? Like that has to be it, right? That has to be it. Ew, no, mm-mm. Y'all like connoisseurs of alcohol like you go ahead and do it and tell me how it is because i'm not gonna do it so after i read that foolishness i just sort of moved on to see what else is going on and i found out that tammy tammy is a 70 something year old woman in boston tammy is over here making three hundred thousand dollars a year that's a good amount of money. That's, that's a good amount of money, okay? You'll be good on that. How is Tammy making that, you ask? Because, you know, she's in her 70s. Is she still working that 9 to 5? No. No. Tammy has a concierge service for students. What is that, you might ask? Tammy is a rent-a-mom. What's a rent-a-mom? Well, you know, there are people who do, like, rent a partner, like rent a girlfriend for a certain amount of time. There's even a woman who does like rent a bridesmaid. Girl, she will, if you don't have no good, good girlfriend to be your know, maid of honor, your bridesmaid or whatever, homegirl will come on in. What's her name? Let's call her Jennifer. Jennifer will come on in and she will be your bridesmaid, girl. And she's, she's not just gonna stand there and look cute in the picture. What she's gonna do is she's gonna have meetings with you via Zoom or like in person and she y'all gonna get a story straight about how you know her because you're not gonna go and tell nobody that's my rent a rent a maid of honor you know rent a bridesmaid no you're not gonna do that so they come up with a story and if you need to jennifer's gonna go ahead and like she'll she'll wear a disguise like she'll change her hair wear a wig or something she'll 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 play the part 
you know what else Jennifer's going to do? Not only is she going to get you that, that lash glue from CVS that you forgot to bring, she's going to go ahead and be in the bridal, like the suite, getting ready with everybody, taking pictures. And girl, she will even write you a speech, a toast. Jennifer is like, I am coming to uh, do a job and that job will be done well. And it's only about $2,500. What's another two $2,500 when you're paying for a wedding? Like, just add it into the cost, okay? So, and she's like, it's different from, I'm not a wedding planner. I am your bridesmaid that don't, nobody ain't ever met me in, in your whole life, but that's okay. That is okay, girl. Stick to the story. So, anyway... Miss Tammy's prices are a little bit higher. Miss Tammy charges $10,000 a semester. No, I'm sorry, girl, because that's too much. Not that this isn't. $10,000 per academic year per student. So if you have a student, let's say uh, Michelle. Michelle is going to college. And Michelle's parents are like, they're, they're busy. They got jobs. They got other kids up in this house. And so... Sometimes, you know, Michelle needs stuff. She needs help with stuff. And that's where Miss Tammy and her girls come in. They are going to be her rent mom. Let me go back. Let me go back and tell you exactly what Miss Tammy offers. Because some of us might need to get one of these. Some of us might need to work with Miss Tammy. Where is it? Where is it? Let me find the thing. Okay, so now Miss Tammy already has like uh, three grown children and she's got about six grandchildren. So it's not like she's just sitting there doing nothing. Seems like she, she's got a busy, busy schedule, but she was like, I'm just going to help these kids out. So not only will she help with the cooking, the cleaning, blah, blah, blah. She will jump on a plane and she will bail your child out of jail. Let me tell you why that's good. I grew up in a house where... My father said, if you get arrested, do not call me. Yun yon. <laughs> you can call your mother, but don't call me. I'm like, okay, I'll be called. I've never been arrested. But I guess I would call the house and be like, Daddy, can you put mommy on the phone? <laughs> but if you lived in a household like this and you had Miss Tammy, you don't have to call your house because Miss Tammy is going to get on a plane and bail you out. But let me tell you what else Miss Tammy does. So the offerings, regular food deliveries, academic assistance, beauty and spa appointment bookings, um, help in making dinner reservations and signing up for gym memberships apartment hunting, furniture building, party planning, doctor referrals, summer storage, and banking and bill payment support. How many of you are like, I need that, okay? Listen, we all know some adults that need that, not just these 18 to 22 year olds. Shoot, I could probably use a little bit of help with some furniture building and getting all my doctor's appointments figured out. I don't have no $10,000 to be giving you, Miss Sally, or Tammy. My bad, her name is Tammy. Only a few people know I be making up names for everybody, but her name for real is Tammy. Now, she launched this in 1993, and she gets about 30 students a year. That's $300,000. Now, of course, she's not taking all of that home, you know, like taxes, and then she has like four other rent-a-moms, um, but... The real serious stuff, like if it's a health emergency or some legal issue, Miss Tammy is the one that's going to come in. Miss Tammy is like boots on the ground. I'll handle the big stuff. Okay? Listen. And she's like, we still stay in contact with all the kids even once they graduate. And um, they did like interviews with some of the kids that are in the program. And they're like, we love it. It's so helpful. I'm over here trying to be like, can we do, like, can some of us get together and do that? But I don't think I'm as nice as Miss Tammy. I just, mm, you be calling me, because they're, they're available 24-7, okay? So 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <sighs> some child might call me at 2 in the morning talking about they locked up somewhere. I'm like, baby, I'll see you about six hours. <laughs> yeah. 
know. I mean, like, what you doing there? <laughs> so, Tammy is rent a mom. My company would be like rent a mama. <laughs> Nobody told you to go out or I would show up at that police station bonnet on. <laughs> They're gonna be like, never mind. Um, we don't want to continue with this rental. Ain't nobody told you to be getting your behind all up in trouble on a school night. So yeah, I mean she's like that they're not trying to... Oh, I'm going to go in with the specular um, primer. And this one is like a glitter glue. She says she's not trying to like replace people's parents. But it's more so like, you know, you're, you're mom away from mom, essentially. And one person seems like he's an international student. And he was like, it was super duper helpful. But anyway... She's like, I'm not trying to take over for your parents, but, you know, sometimes parents can't be there. And it sounds like Miss Tammy knows the ins and outs of different systems and stuff, so. Sure. What do I want to use? Mm, what do I want to use? I guess maybe this one here. That is Ava or Alva. Look at that. So I'm going to put that on top of that glitter primer. Girl, so that's Miss Tammy. She worked with people from NYU. Um, Parsons Stu School of Design. You, there are pictures of her, like, she's got, um, just these pans of lasagna. You know, I might have to call Miss Tammy. I might have to call Miss Tammy. They, you know, initially I was like, we gotta let these kids learn how to do stuff, right? But I'm, 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 there, I know full-on adults who not who don't know how to do this stuff. Yeah, these people they from like the Upper East Side and stuff like. Like, what I'm used to is if you know somebody is going to college and you have, like, your good old church friend or, you know, the church friend's, like, baby daddy's auntie's sister's cousin or something, then you just call that person and you're like, listen, um, Pookie is going to school by y'all, so can you just, like, keep an eye on him and everything? That's how it works from what I know. I Like, that's maybe that's just my community and my culture. So tell me how it works for you. But that's how I know. Like, when I was looking at schools and stuff, it would be like, okay, so-and-so lives over there. So-and-so live right there. So-and-so lives in that state. Because it was like, you need somebody to be watching out for you, you know? But, child, Miss Tammy was like, I got you. <laughs> Miss Tammy was like, this is a full service. You can call me any time of the day or night, any day of the week. That, but you know what? That's why it's better than what I could offer because I'm like, do not call me. Do not call me. Okay, this is a nine to five service. Do not call me. I'm talking about you need to set up an appointment with your doctor. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's working. You know, initially I was I was a little like, that's not, you know, I was a little salty about it. Like, wasn't nobody doing that for me. But you know what? It sounds like it's a good idea. It sounds like it's a good idea. Miss Tammy found the market and she is capitalizing on it. And who am I to try to dim her light? No one, okay? No one. <laughs> Let me tell you this other story. Let me tell you this other story because I want to know how you would react. I'm going in with the same primer on the other eye. I realized I used it with a brush. So this couple, they were going on a like a road trip 
and something happened. So they were just driving along. I think uh, it's a husband and wife. The husband's 55 and the wife is 49. They're just driving along. It doesn't say necessarily why they were going anywhere, what they're going to be doing. But, you know, husband had to use the bathroom, as is common when you're going on a long road trip, right? You got to get out and pee. Now, it seemed like they didn't necessarily stop at a, like, a rest stop. It seemed like they just pulled to the side of the road so that he could relieve himself. Now, the wife, she was just, like, chilling in the back seat. But she's like, shoot, I gotta, I gotta pee, too. So she goes out into the trees to go ahead and relieve herself. Now... She comes back. Mind you, it's like 3 in the morning. I don't know. I'm, you gonna have to hold it. Because I'm not pulling over to anybody's side of anybody's road to try to get out in the Lord's jungles and trees and forests to pee. You gonna have to hold it. You gonna have to get a bottle. Uh, like, throw the water out of it. and Like, because we not stopping. Okay? No, this is not full service. Like, you, we gonna have to wait. And so... Um, yeah, they called it a jungle. She went into the jungle. Um, who am I, George of the jungle? No, no, not doing it. So when she gets back to the car, the car is gone. Car and husband are gone. I would be like, I know he did. I know he did not leave me out here up in this jungle by myself at three in the morning. So she's like, what is going on? And of course, she had left her phone and her money, her purse and everything in the car. The car that has now disappeared with her husband. So they, they said she had no choice but to walk 13 miles in the middle of the night through the center of the city. And she, about five in the morning, she got to a police station and was like that she needs some help finding her husband. And she's over here telling them like, there's nothing, like we're good. There's nothing wrong with the relationship. We weren't fighting, nothing. He just gone. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, um, we'll call him. We'll call the number. But you know, it's, it's that, it's that era where people don't know nobody's phone number she don't know her husband's phone number so she go on she goes on and calls her phone like 20 times but i don't know if it was on vibrate if it was on silent whatever it was it wasn't picked up now He finally realized that his wife was <laughs> his wife was not in the back seat of the car. He thought she was back there sleeping. He was a hundred miles away. So you drove. <laughs> That's over an hour, okay? That is what's that like an hour and a half? I don't know what that is, but he <laughs> He must have been like, man, it's so nice. She quiet back there. And then, like, look back like, ain't nobody back there, girl. <laughs> so he realizes and just, like, turns around to go back to get her. <laughs> and homegirl, she was fine. Like, she was, like, she wasn't mad. Apparently, they've moved past it. They've been married for uh over 27 years. So, I don't need y'all to check those back seats. <laughs> he was like, I thought she was back there. I, how, would you, how would you react and respond? I feel like I would be like, you knew I wasn't back there. You knew I was not back there. I knew, like, <laughs> that's how I feel like that's how it would be. You knew I was not back there. You just acting a fool. Got me walking out here 13 miles. And it's not like she could have just stood there because it's the middle of the night in a jungle. Which, child. Mm, mm, mm. Me and him would have been fighting. We would have been fighting. Time out, I didn't know you weren't there. Where do you think I was? 
I'm that quiet when I sleep? You didn't hear me snoring. Like, you didn't hear any snoring and you thought that that was normal. He knew she wasn't back there. <laughs> I don't know if I can believe it. I don't know. Y'all, would you believe it if you're with your partner or a friend or anything and you were like, boom, let's, like, you just get back in the car. How do you, what? How do you do that? You just get back in the car and you're like, all right, time to go. You don't look back. <laughs> I'm suspect because I'm super suspicious. I don't feel like that's possible. Don't trust him to drive you nowhere, okay? First of all, he got you out here at 3 in the morning talking about pee in the bushes. And then he don't even, like, look to make sure. So you didn't hear her get out the car to go pee? Something don't sound right. Girl, y'all must have had some kind of fight. And he was like, I'm going to show her. I'm going to show her. But you get 100 miles away. What was you doing on them 100 miles? Who was in your car with you? That, that seems a little implausible that you somehow didn't notice for over an hour that I wasn't in the how, how you figure it out? How you figure it out then? How you figure it out? What made you be like, huh, wifey, what's going on? So you, I mean, this don't feel like it's, something is not healthy in this relationship. Like, I'm just not okay with it. Like, what made you finally decide to turn around and realize that I wasn't in there? You heard my phone. You brought. You heard my phone going off twenty times. Child, that's called. He is. I don't, I don't know what that's called actually. But I'm just thinking. We've been together about thirty years. Like, you know. I mean. You're not even going to be like, hey, babe, like, put on your seatbelt. Like, you just bonked out. <laughs> There's no way. The more I think about it, there is no way that he didn't know she wasn't in that car. How is that possible? How is that possible? Somebody explain to me because maybe it is and maybe I, I don't know. I really don't know. She's better than me. She said, I'm going to walk these 13 miles. And it seemed like it took her about a good two hours. Right? Because she got to the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. So that whole time that she is walking through the jungle to get to the middle of the city. And he's just driving, blasting his like car playlist so it had to be about two hours that he didn't know she was wasn't in the car y'all <laughs> i said you know what it i don't even know i actually don't know i don't know what i don't know what why how or anything related to it i don't know i don't know how that happened I feel like I would notice if somebody wasn't in the car with me. Like, I don't know. Do you not check? Do you not check and be like, okay, you know, everybody in, you know, got everything. I feel like that's real suspect. He not tell they not telling the truth. Somebody got into a fight and something happened. I don't even, I, I have no explanation. I have no explanation for this one. Nope. Nope. There have been a couple of other just like random crazy stories. Like there was, <laughs> there were these friends in Finland and one friend called the police, called the authorities on another friend because dude put 26.5 pounds of dynamite in the friend's car as a joke. I don't have that kind of sense of humor. <laughs> what do you mean this was a joke? Like, first of all, I don't... I, what, first of all, where did you get it? 
Where did you get? Where did you get 26.5 pounds of dynamite? How did you transport it? What made you think I wanted it in my car? How'd you get it in there? And I mean, what was the joke? Like, did the joke not happen because it didn't ignite? Like, what, what was the, what, what was the joke? I don't even understand. I don't know. And neither one of us laughing because now I done called the police on you. Now I called the police. I, that all sound like a friendly kind of joke, okay? Are you sure that y'all are friends? I'm not sure that you are. Because I don't want the kind of friend that's going to put 26.5 pounds of dynamite in my car. I don't want that kind of friend. That don't sound like a real friend, okay? You know, <laughs> what's that saying? With friends like these, like, so <laughs> either they're an enemy or they're an idiot. Like, could, could you imagine you're like, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> Let me get, uh, I'm get all this dynamite, put it in his car. Like, what did he expect? So he had to hope, he had to hope that his friend didn't turn the ignition, right? I don't know where he put it. Did he put it in the front seat? Did he put it in the back seat? Did he put it in the trunk? Either way, I'm guessing it's not safe to have dynamite in your car. I'm guessing. I don't know. I've never experienced it. Like, but it, it just seems like it's not... Like, not a good idea. That's not... See, people be using the term friend too loosely. <laughs> Don't call that person my friend. That's not a friend, sir. That is my enemy. How would you even explain that? Like, girl, I thought it was just so funny. Just to see what was going to happen. <laughs> what? I don't even know. Don't be playing with stuff like that. Y'all, what is the world coming to? What is the world coming to? What is the world coming to? Could you imagine? <laughs> That's not a friend. I don't know what that is. All I know is it's not a friend. It is not a friend. What did he expect was gonna happen? Like, what did he expect was gonna happen? Literally, physically. And if nothing did happen, what did he what did he expect his friend? Like, what did he expect the response to be? Like, dude, that's a good one. You totally got me. Like, what? No, we ain't for so. Mm, I feel like we missing something. I feel like we're missing something from this story because I feel like they're taking liberties and calling these people friends. They, mm -mm. I would not be introducing that person as my friend. That's crazy. <laughs> that is insane. Like, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, nothing, girl. I was just messing with my friend. I put some dynamite in their car. Got arrested. You know, no big deal. It's just a joke. Speaking of friends, there <laughs> were two roommates slash friends in Kentucky, because why not? And one of them goes in the kitchen, and you've had this experience before. You know, when you put something in the fridge and you are just waiting, you are waiting to get home to eat whatever that is, that piece of chicken, that, that ice cream that you put in the fridge for yourself to eat, right? So home dude gets home and he goes to the freezer, to the refrigerator, and to get a little hot pocket, 
my last hot pocket is gone. Last hot pocket is gone. So he approaches his roommate like, where the last hot pocket at? Mind you, this man, Clifton, is 64 years old. 64 years old. <laughs> and he decided that his roommate, they don't give the roommate's name, age, or any other thing. He was pis that this roommate allegedly ate the last hot pocket. You know what he did? Clifton shot this man in the butt. Man, they had a fight and the man was trying to run away. Brian, knowing he ate that hot pocket. And Clifton shot him. Right in the behind. <laughs> Clifton shot him right in the arse. Because he was mad. Clifton was like, I'm so tired of you always eating the last. I was looking forward to that damn hot pocket. Been waiting all day to come home and eat my hot pocket. And you had to go ahead and eat it. But now you see Clifton. Now you you have a you have you about to have criminal charges, Clifton. Cause you can't just be going around shooting people who eat your hot pockets. And we don't even know if he actually was the one that ate it. We don't know. They didn't say yay or nay about it. They didn't say whether uh, the roommate actually ate the hot pocket. I don't know. Maybe Clifton ate it and forgot. Has that, like, has that ever happened to you where you're like, who ate this thing? And then you remember, snap, I think I ate it like two days ago. You never know. I don't know. People just be taking stuff that's not theirs. There's this other girl... She went to go test drive like a Kia. She went to um, the car dealership. And the car dealer is like showing her the car. And I think it's a used car. They're like, here are all the features, blah, blah. But he has to keep running inside to get the phone. Like the phone keeps ringing. But every time he goes to answer it, like there's nobody on the other line. Um, like nobody on the end, right? He's like, what is happening? So he's trying to help her do all this stuff. And then he's got this person like pranking him, calling and like not saying anything. So the last time he goes into like the little, you know, the little office, um, little office to answer the phone. You know, at this point he had already put her information in the, the computer and all that. Well... He comes out and the car and homegirl are gone. Just gone. Now you might think that this is a regular old somebody stole a car from the dealership, but it's not. Let me tell you how it's different. Cause she brought it back. She brought it back. She only wanted to borrow it. She had a job interview at a strip club. So she, most of us might go ahead and take an Uber, right? We might call a girlfriend and be like, hey girl, can you take me to this, this interview real quick? Um, I don't think most of us are going to go ahead and like plan to, like that's a lot that she went through to steal this car. I can appreciate that she got it, that she sent it back, right? She, she returned it. So here's the thing, you know, the car dealership obviously calls the police and they're like, um, somebody stole our car and the police are like, be right over. And no, this isn't it. All my liners. Be right over. And so they get to her house and she opens the door and she's like, what's, <laughs> what's happening? What's going on? And they're like, ma'am, um, you like stole a car. And she's like, yeah, but I gave it back. So it's not for real stole. Right? Here's the thing. Here's the other twist of the story. She gave the car back. She brought, she brought the car back to the dealer, to the dealership. But she left the keys in the car. And somebody else stole it. 
Oh my god. But if that wasn't enough, you know, she thought she was free and clear because she's like, I brought the car back. I don't understand. I just needed to, I needed a ride. And it's not like I didn't bring it back. I didn't expect somebody else to steal it. But the police are like, did you know that somebody else stole it? And she's like, oh yeah. And they're like, how did you know? And she literally was like, I saw it on that bitch Snapchat. You need new friends. So here is the finished look. I had a lot of fun talking about the news as I usually do. But let me know your opinions on the Rent-A-Mom, the um, guy who forgot his wife, the food flavored beverages, the girl who borrowed the car to go to her job interview, and the dude who shot his roommate in the butt because he ate his food. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, I know some of you are going to have stories <laughs> about similar experiences. I always love that. Also, let me know if you're doing anything for the end of the year. If you are, please, please be safe. I hope that some of this was helpful and I also hope that you are continuing to take care of yourself. Be sure to leave me a comment. I would love it if you liked the video and I would love it even more if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so, so much for watching all of my videos this year. I don't know if this is the last one that I'm uploading for the year, but it might be. So with that in mind, thank you. I have so much fun doing YouTube. It is a wonderful part of my week. It has become a wonderful part of my life. A great way for me to just chill out and relax and bring my silly self to the world. Um, and I've met so many wonderful people. Just, mm, I love it. So I really appreciate you watching, you commenting, you encouraging, and hopefully I am able to give you a little something back, whether that's a laugh or just some warm and fuzzies. And I'm excited to see what we're gonna do in the new year. Might be the same old stuff. You know how people say new year, new me? New year, same old me. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.